Color printing with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle can be very frustrating. Every time I tried it, it resulted in embarrassing failures. That was until a few 0.2 millimeter nozzle experts reached out to help and together we went from something that looks like this and I'm showing you nothing because that is the result I was getting to something that looks like this with extremely fine details and you can still read some of this text even though it is a font size of one and a half. So let me show you just how easy it is so that you can do it yourself and achieve unparalleled detailed color prints on those first few critical layers. So stick around. In my previous video, I tested out a few upgrades for the Bamboo X1 and P1 series printers. And even though there didn't seem to be much of a quality difference, I like how the upgrades look and how they work. And I would like to do some more long-term testing on them as well. My only issue now is that the insert up on the top says Beat You, and I think it really needs to say Bamboo Lab. This is the model that we're working with today, and it's pretty simple. I have changed it a little bit from the one that came with the new skeletonized cover because I'd like the text to pop even more with that backlit LED. I've also made this larger so that it fits the cover a little bit better, and there's a very slight taper so that it does not want to rattle around, and of course that's going to help to block the light around as well. I had a 0.2 millimeter hot end on hand, so it should just be a matter of swapping it in and printing the new insert that I designed. Uh, well, not so fast. With a 0.2 millimeter, that means there is far less area in contact with the build plate for extrusions, and for me, nothing seemed to be working. I tried the new bamboo cool plate, I tried the Bichu cryo plates for better adhesion, I tried glue stick, I tried more glue stick, I tried slowing down the first layer to 10 millimeters per second, I tried adding a big rim, changing the color order as well. Unfortunately, none of that worked. You might be saying that you can easily print this yourself, and if you are, you're probably using PLA, but there is an LED back there, and it's already gonna be pretty warm. So PETG is a little bit better choice. ABS or maybe ASA might be the best choice for this area. In any case, PETG is what I'm using today. The first four prints I tried resulted in time lapses so short that they ended up being one still image of me just stopping the prints. So let's make a few little changes to get some results. Elephant's foot compensation is currently turned on, but for this nozzle size, we need to turn that off. The text and the gaps between them are small and inconsistent. Switching from classic to arachne with the variable extrusion width will give us a little bit better result here. And there are also some extra features available now that we can play around with. I can adjust the minimum wall width a little bit lower and I can adjust the minimum feature size a bit lower as well. Also, depending on how fine the details are on your particular print, you can modify the extrusion width a little bit down, and that should help fill in some of those voids as well. The standard profile uses four walls. What we need to do is change it to two. We could even change it to one if we wanted to. In this case, I don't want sparse infill, so I've changed it to 100%. Layer height is not critical, but thinner for those first colored layers is gonna be a bit better because it's gonna squish down a little bit more. So I'm using 0.1 millimeters for the layer height. These are all the settings except for one more, which is really the key to getting the best results, but we're gonna come back to that one in just a moment. At the printer with the new hot end installed, it's best to install the build plate that you'd like to use. And I've been testing the Bamboo SuperTac and it has a pretty fine texture. We can run Calibrate, turn off motor noise cancellation, and run with the .2 in there. First, here is the print with all of the pro settings alone and I've slowed it down on the first layer quite a bit to help it out. And you can see that it is getting some bonding, but it's not enough. We're almost there, but there is one more thing that we need to do, and it does not work well without it, and that is to add an object below our print. In my case, what I was able to do is draw what looks like a brim, but it's really a solid printed raft. Now, this is not normally a good idea for anything big because we need to remove it, but I think at this small scale, this is the best way to get that filament to bond instantly to get the precision that we need. In my case, I'll add a green sacrificial pet G layer and the final print will have white text and a black surround. A different material as a sacrificial layer may be an option, but pet G likes to bond with pet G. Any other material I tried does not produce good enough results here. Now, if you did not design this, you can still right click on your part and load in a primitive shape and then play around with the positions. You should be able to raise your part in order to get it to work. With this setup, you can leave your first layer speed as standard, which does save quite a bit of time. I also like to shrink the purge tower quite a lot. 
and I like to move the purge tower as close to the print as I possibly can get it. That's going to prevent oozing of the PETG or whatever filament we're using. For the highest quality final product, you can try ironing the first layer. That's going to give it an even better base. And for the best result, I will disable filament calibration during the print and instead do a filament calibration through the calibration tab within Bamboo Studio. So that's what I've done here and I've done it with each of the colors that I want to use. we're seeing great bonding and precision and for all of the following layers they're doing the exact same. Hot off of the press these two certainly look like they turned out well and we'll finish these off in just a second. Now I have to say I'm not actually a fan of printing with this nozzle size it does certainly come in handy for really high detail projects like this but it is super slow I it's almost painful to even try and print with this nozzle size compared to a 0.4 or anything larger than that. So there's probably a better way to do this. I think a fiber laser would be a great option to print this in such a way that you could remove some material with a fiber laser. I don't have a fiber laser. So until I get one, this is the option that I'm gonna go with. So here are all of my samples and there are quite a few more that didn't even turn out at all. There was nothing printed to even show you, but I had some that had some adhesion all the way up to some that had decent adhesion, just did not turn out well enough. If you go deep enough, I'm sure that some of the layers started to turn out fine. So I'm gonna grab a file and remove that 0.1 millimeter layer thickness, and then I'll finish it off with some sandpaper. If you don't have a file, you can definitely just go right to sandpaper. This is just a very old file that I got for a dollar, and I've done some rust removal on, so you can pretty much use whatever you have. This is some 600 grit sandpaper, just to remove some scratches. And why not take it to 2000 grit as well. We're already here. I can't say I have ever taken a 3D print to 2000 grit. That's more like a polish. So that little rim of green should just peel right off. And there we have it. That first file was probably a little bit aggressive. You can see a little bit deeper scratch there. So I would have to go with a little bit finer file or just go directly to sandpaper. But overall, this looks really good. I'm happy with the result. And all we need to do now is plug this in and see what it looks like with the LED on. If you want to try this yourself, I've created a fine detail torture test print going from a 5 font size to a 1.5 font size with a fairly narrow font as well. And I will leave a link below for that. It comes with a profile so that you have a good starting point. I was just about ready to give up on my project and TBK Maker reached out to offer some help. His goal is to help people who are having difficulty with 3D printing. So if you need some help as well, I'll leave a link below where you can find him. And I also want to thank Dirk who has been helping me with the X1C nozzle wiper issues with PETG and with this problem as well. Hopefully this opens up some options for you like it has for me. And if you found this video helpful and you're enjoying this type of content, consider subscribing to help support this channel. I also have a short list of products that I like to use in my shop on a regular basis. Some of those links help to support this channel as well so I can keep making content. And thank you to each of my patrons for your support and for helping to make these videos possible. I really appreciate it. Take care and we will see you on the next one.